Welcome to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia or just get a little creative. So every month we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be near and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message over on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Screen Refresh or shoot an email at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are or suggest future topics. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dean and Tim. Bonjour. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the muzzy line. French. Bonjour, <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Je suis la une fille. <laughs> That's the one. Actually, Spotify Wrapped came out, and uh, we, I think France is one of our top five countries we are listened to in. So thank you to listeners around the world. So yeah, top, uh, top three Bill Murray movies don't know why i picked it and it has nothing to do with scrooge i just you know looking around my room i figured you know what maybe uh what we need is a little bill murray in this place well i feel like he has a large enough body of work also that you can say pick your favorite movie and i don't think we're necessarily all going to immediately go to the same one wait we could but there's enough that there's a bit of a gamble to it i am um... I mean, there's definitely your head. The mind definitely goes to certain movies when you hear his name. Um, and there's some that I'm like, I was looking back over his uh, filmmaker. Uh, I was looking back over his IMDb, and like, there's so many that I like. I wanted to say, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't think I can talk about it enough. I'd have to watch it again. I haven't seen some of these movies in like forever, but. Like, there's one that I wanted to say that I'm just like, I I, th- I know he's good in this, but I couldn't talk about it. I'd have to watch it again. It's just been such a long time. That is the exact case I ran into, because <laughs> there was one that I knew from, like, my very indie, late middle school, early high school days, that I was like, oh, it's definitely this movie. Then I thought about it, and I'm like, I haven't seen it since I was in, like, the 10th grade. I don't know if it holds up. I don't know if it's something that if I rewatch, I'd be like, ooh, oh, maybe not. So I'm like, I'll go with my second pick. Nick, was yours just dead on first pick? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally okay. I was just thinking about it. I was like, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff lately. And it was just, it was hard to think, what can I talk about without having to go and rewatch the entire thing? The way I took it was, um, I try to use this podcast as a means of talking about certain subjects and there's going to be some that I know will not be easily brought up. It's like, I don't like a specific set of movies. So the likelihood of me ever being able to talk about this again, because it bridges that gap. And it's like in that, what's that, that um, Venn diagram Mm. thing. Like it's in that section where I am able to talk about it tonight. If I chose it, else if i went with something that it's like i'm sure everyone's probably thinking like he's gonna pick ghostbusters like yes that's my favorite one of his but i don't want to talk about that one because the likelihood of us talking about ghostbusters is going to be a lot higher than me talking about this specific one yeah makes sense sometimes there's low hanging fruit but in other cases i mean um this one is definitely I don't think you guys would have expected me to say it. The one what, I, the one you're going to pick? The, the one I picked, yeah. I feel like I want to text you right now and have you not look at your phone until after you say it, just so I can he try to be to right. Know. You're about to find out. Like, what, What's the urgency? I just, I, there's a satisfaction in knowing I'm right. I like to deflate. <laughs> Wait, so that means if I text you and I am right, you're going to pick a completely different one? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, He'll do good it. luck not being able to say this one, then. He'll do it. <laughs> um, my mind went right to one of his, I guess, what many people would say, top three Bill Murray movies. But, Razor's uh, Edge. Yeah. And I, because I had seen it recently, I, or I guess out of everything, it's the most recent. And it's actually my first time seeing it. I know it's like, it sounds weird being cryptic, because I'm not going to say the title of the movie yet, but... Um, I, I stayed away from that one because I'm like, I guess because it, it was a big three. I'm like, eh, let's see what else I can come up with. Kind of the uh, same. Quick being change, the, the, Nick, the one where he's a clown. 
a chuck or a oh what was that called some with change quick change quick change yeah, yeah. Uh, where the Buffalo Roam, where he played Hunter S. Thompson. There is, when I look through his IMDb, I have not seen a lot of them. And there's some I definitely should have seen by this point in time in my life. Because I know, like, you know, let me shake up the crowd. And, like, I've never seen Caddyshack. Cue the collective gasp. But, like, there's just a lot that he's been in. And it's just, like, you haven't either. I have seen Caddyshack, Double and gasp. personally, Gasp, you're not missing much. <laughs> I'm sorry, Caddyshack fans, but like, it's maybe it's just not for me. If you love it, that's great. But I watched it, and it's like I laughed at a couple Chevy Chase lines. But other than that, like, I am not a Rodney Dangerfield fan myself necessarily. Um, all of the Bill Murray stuff of him as like the the uh, gardener or groundskeeper or whatever, like. Or yeah, the none groundskeeper, of, groundskeeper. Yeah. yeah, none of that worked with me. So I'm just like, get back to Chevy Chase getting to say one line that's amusing and then go back and play golf or whatever it is. I think I could offend some people on the same level over Animal House. I don't know if that's you guys. He was in that. <laughs> no, it's, it's not Bill Murray. I just th- I'm thinking or, of no, just all like lauded similar. comedies of that era. Yeah, I'm also not really an Animal House I didn't like Animal House either. Which Good. We're all in agreement. Yeah. I mean, at least it's... I like Dumb Revenge of the Nerds a lot better. I Agreed. also didn't Agreed. like that. Tim, you're... you're. I, I like a lot you of... You have a very selective slice of comedy, and I, I, uh, I'm pretty confident that I know which ones, <laughs> if I were to mention, let's watch this tonight, you'd find every reason Wait, not text, to watch. I mean, I'll, text. Still, I'll still watch anything. Text Tim a list of these comedies and then later on. <laughs> Just so we can say. Well, Dean, there's one reason why um, we've secretly been cutting in basketball whenever we can <laughs> into this podcast. That's because that's a movie we'll never be able to. Uh, I, we I watched, watched that. Basketball with Dean. You did. At my request, I think. I don't know why. But just because you watch something with Dean doesn't mean you want to do it again. <laughs> True. I think I watched Dumb and Dumber with Dean. I'm not going to do it again. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so good. Hey, but that's the lovely thing about movies. You guys love them. I don't have to love them. But just because I don't like them. So if them. we do like a Jim Carrey, if we do like a Jim Carrey like stint. He's going to choose. Is it possible that maybe Dumb and Dumber could be no, on the list? No, he's going to choose Dumb and the number the 23. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yeah, I walked into that one. <laughs> so what is it? Since it's... Does the like to... host go last? Is that the I was just about to say, up? since it's your episode, you want to back yes. clean up, right? Dean, yes. would you like to go I mean, I don't first? Have to. I'll go would first. Would you like me to go first? Okay. Um, so this is... There's plenty of movies with Bill Murray that aren't Bill Murray movies, but he's in them. Um, and this is one of those movies. Although he's... I guess he's arguably... He's the antagonist. So, not arguably. I think he is. He's the antagonist. Um, it is... Oh, shit. I didn't look at the year. I didn't look too much up about this movie, but I just remember it. 1997's Kingpin. Bowling movie Kingpin. <laughs> Big Arnie Crack and you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> I I, oh, that. you should. I remember finally seeing Big Lebowski, and it's like every movie it, during like the 90s and you know, 2000s, they, there was always like two movies that came out that had identical themes almost from like a trailer perspective like big lebowski every trailer showed them bowling and then like kingpin comes out and it's more like bowling. more bowling hollywood know, does that yeah they impact. do that on purpose um yeah competing studios and, um big lebowski was the one that always came up for me but not seeing kingpin i've always wanted to see. i think that one well, I there weren't like any amish people in the big lebowski as far as i can there tell. were nihilists though <laughs> yeah there were um, and they were German, and the Pennsylvania Dutch are actually related to Germans, so there's the connection. Um, <laughs> but Kingpin, it's, I mean, I'm surprised, Tim, do you like that movie? 
I've never seen it. Okay, you you won't like it because it's a Farley just, Brothers movie. I've just seen that one line so many times that it always <laughs> makes me laugh. But yeah, like I'm, I know like this is this makes me sound terrible. This entire episode, I'm also not a Farley Brothers fan. I'm very selective com- about their stuff. Hates comedy that that Tim. Um, I don't like laughing. <laughs> That's why I have you as a co-host, Dean. Well, then, okay, so the <laughs> brief synopsis of Kingpin is um, Woody Harrelson is a formerly great professional bowler um, who is fallen on hard times. Like, nowadays, he's, like, broke and struggling for to pay rent. Um he lo- oh that's what you know what happened he lost his hand in, a, in an accident but if you want to watch well, it yeah I that'll also it. affect bowling <laughs> his bowling hand <laughs> cut mangled in an accident he fell on hard times you know and oh yeah also he lost his bowling hand when he's a professional <laughs> bowler it was like all coming back and he was like wait no that's it that's why <laughs> he's a kicker for the patriots and uh for some reason he oh that's right he lost his leg <laughs> He just kind of got fired and fell on hard times. No, <laughs> unrelated to the leg. Um, but actually, it's it's Bill Murray's character that fucks him over, because Woody Harrelson beats him in the opening, like, uh, championship match. Um, and then he's like, "Hey, let me let you in on this little like game we play for fun and money." Like, and they're gonna like run kind of a uh, a shark kind of operation on these people like it's supposed to be just amateurs playing but he, you know they're professional champions and they're going to go in and do the old like double or nothing and take all their money um but <laughs> they find him out and they end up sticking his hand in the the ball return which i don't know how dangerous it is in there but that's how he loses his hand they force his hand into the ball return oh my God. and uh yeah, he just he ends up taking Randy Quaid, uh, who's an Amish for per- an Amish person in the movie. He's Randy Quaid team. is yeah. Um, he takes him on a a road trip to Vegas to compete in this big uh, tournament because he saw him bowling and you know there's Amish humor. You know there's can't get enough of that for richer or for poorer with Tim Allen it came out, but. We need a more Amish humor, and this kind of fit the bill. But uh, they meet Ernie. Ernie, he's like, he appears here and there in the movie, and obviously during the tournament, he's 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 the guy to beat. And I don't know, it's just he, it's Bill Murray being. Obviously, we know he's good. He can be an asshole, and he's like really good at it in this movie. And it's just kind of perfect. His hair, his hair is, <laughs> his hair just like starts to come undone like during this whole ending sequence of the movie as they're bowling and it gets more intense and it's just his hair is wild and all over the place it's... the costuming and wardrobe always stood out for me because i always remember that the most watching it because just that their outfits are always like so extreme so isn't he wearing like some yeah of... yes his yeah and his like bowling ball is like a, a rose kind of cemented in the resin inside of yeah. it. it's like see-through He's very like mm-hmm. trying to be like the John, um, the John McEnroe kind of of uh, bowling hot shot. Because I always remember this, the trailers so much, <laughs> and I remember when it came out in the '90s, like the, the all the trailers were on TV, and I just never got around to it. But I always end up seeing the trailers and just seeing how it, they looked in the movie. It really stood out. It's kind of hard to forget, so him getting disheveled and all that at the end <laughs> must be hilarious. Yeah, he's just a really good shithead, like sore loser and just scheming. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I don't know. You, you should definitely give it a give it a watch. If if not for just Bill Murray, there's there's I'm sure you can find yeah, I might have to. even Tim. You can find some entertainment in Kingpin. I'll try it for you, Dean. Fun fact. Um, the movie I made my junior year in film school, we shot at a bowling alley. Was a shot we shot at a make? bowling alley where they shot the opening scene in that movie. 
And in the back, the owner had this big check that they used, the Odor Eaters like <laughs> Championship. <laughs> it says it has the Woody Harrelson's character's name on it, Roy Munson. Uh, and I, I we we pasted it up on the wall, so it was in the background of my movie. I put the still up <laughs> on screenrefresh.com and Instagram. So that uh, movie was like in the cinematic universe. Yeah, or yeah right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, Kingpin, like it's, yeah, it's just, it's, Bill Murray's probably in like 30% of the movie, but he shines the whole time he's there. So you're saying watch a super cut. Sometimes movies need that. If it's a good one. Nah, sometimes it's better when a bigger a bigger um, actor is in it for less. Because it's like um, when we saw Legend, like in this case, I wanted Tim Curry to be in it more, but every time he was yeah. on screen, he stole the yeah. show. True. So Tim, what is your, your uh, so, choice for Bill Murray? Originally, I was going to go with uh, Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation, just because I saw it years ago, and it was a movie I enjoyed, and I've never revisited it because I don't know if I will still enjoy it because it's a good movie or if I only enjoyed it because I thought Tokyo was super cool and that's where it took place back then. So when, I, when, I'm, that... when I'm on set, I still say, in reference to like the opening when he's with the, he's doing the commercial, the Japanese yeah. director is like, Kato, Kato, Kato. <laughs> I'll say that on set sometimes. So I actually went with my favorite Bill Murray movie that is pr- kind of relevant to when this comes out, but it is Richard Donner's 1990- or 1988 Scrooged. It is a Bill Murray role <laughs> that I think there's other ones where I like it more. But Scrooge in its entirety, I think, is just a a fun take on the entire Christmas Carol story, while also being very uniquely its own, um, as far as like the changes it makes from the the standard tale. But his closing monologue that he gives, I like post it every year on Christmas Eve, just because it's so off kilter and just ranty and rambly but i think it just at its heart really cements the christmas spirit um that i it's i love scrooged i don't know if either of you have i need to see it that's another like i i remember the um on our discord we used to do um we do framed every day but we used to do some of the other ones too and um the poster one i was that was one of the ones i'm really good at and that one i always just think of like the blockbuster thing where like you know he's on the cover yeah. it's black and he's holding the cigar he just like has I a big like expression on his face that's one i haven't seen since i think it's one of those like i think i saw it on comedy central years ago and haven't like gone back to revisit it even though i think i'm going to put it on my list this year christmas movies to watch it's very fun. I think there's still funny parts that hold up in it um, overall. I think it has a lot of great character actors that pop in and out, like Bobcat Goldthwait. You have John Glover as, I think, like the head of the um, TV station. Uh, we have Karen Allen as his um, lost love. Like All of these various characters that also play the uh, Ghosts of Christmas Past, Present, Future so on and so forth that i think it's really a sign of the late 80s Um, as a whole it definitely feels like a late 80s movie but for some reason like a christmas time late 80s movie just even when it seems dated just seems comforting as a whole um that i end up enjoying it every year i think there's something just about that 70s 80s like literally I'm thinking like film and film grain and the way light they can make light just seem so glowy. Especially yeah. around Christmas time when literally the lighting and just the wrapping paper. Something about that retro style that I think I know what you mean. 
it just says more it's more so Christmas maybe it's a nostalgia thing but I don't know I, I would agree with you which the thing that's odd is growing up we never we never really got to watch Scrooge that much we finally um, I think watched it one year I think my parents didn't care for it overall because it was too um, I don't know abrasive um, <laughs> a storyline overall um, but I remember like breaking down into tears as a child when i saw it on tv when like the one of the the homeless men that he meets ends up freezing to death in the sewers and i figured like but he'll come back at the end when he learns his error of his ways and it's like no oh no he's dead he's he's dead regardless <laughs> learning the true spirit of christmas won't bring that guy's body temp back up <laughs> who is it that plays the cabbie he looks familiar Buster Point Dexter. Where else have you I know the seen the song that Hot guy? Hot Hot? Uh, I think so from commercials. <laughs> yeah. The people at the party, Hot Hot Hot, Ole Ole. Yeah, that's Buster Point Dexter. Okay. But he's been in a bunch of other stuff too. Hmm. Yeah, he looks like a. He, I, mean, I mean, it might be just this movie that I'm like, oh, I've seen this. Because I, I have the seen this. Christmas present forever. was uh, Carol Kane. Yeah, yeah. Where she just flies in and just beats Bill Murray throughout the entire time. <laughs> like, <laughs> all of these various, uh, I think it's like an iron and all of this stuff. But it's Richard a fun bit Donner. of slapstick. I didn't know it was Richard Donner. Yep, so. Yeah, it definitely, definitely has. Him. Yeah, it definitely has the, the quality to it. Because it's not like a, it's a pretty big budget, big spectacle Christmas movie. Um, that has a, a lot of decent like effects work and things like that when he meets the their version of Marley um, instead of a ghost he's like an undead zombie yeah. that comes out but it's a lot of good work in the, the movie overall um, I think it might have been nominated for an Oscar I don't recall Best Bill Murray Best Bill Murray So Nick all right, Tim, Your what is my pick? Is Wes Anderson's Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. No, it's SNL's Nick the Lounge Singer singing <laughs> the Star Wars theme. I remember that movie. I thought you were going to throw me a curveball and say Space Jam. Yes, it was Life Aquatic <laughs> with Steve Zissou. It is Life Aquatic with that's, Steve Zissou. That's Steve honestly Zissou. another one that crossed my mind. I'm like, fuck, I haven't seen that since... Like, it came out on DVD. I remember loving it so much. I was like, I can't say anything. I can't remember it. It was, I was thinking about it, and then I'm like, I'm pretty sure Nick's going to pick this, and I don't want to take it from him because like, <laughs> I would not have guessed when that. I, but... When I think of this movie, I think of you, Nick, because you had the painting of him yeah, that's pretty <laughs> from Life Aquatic, mm. and it was like all over the, the apartment at various points. You have close information that I did not have. Like I don't mind. Well, no, I. How can I word this? Um, <laughs> you did text um, I have my phone on silent, so I didn't even hear the thing go off. I just took a picture of the the painting thing, but no, it's just I. I don't. I tolerate Wes Anderson. I appreciate what he does. He does amazing work. You could be the best peach pie in the world, but not everyone likes peach pies, you know? And that's that's exactly it. It's just he's amazing at what he does. He has great cinematography. His writing is on like on point. But just a lot of his movies fall flat with me personally. Like Royal Tenenbaums, I give it a solid like five, but I know that's like a ten for a lot of people. Even watching Life Aquatic for the first time, I didn't immediately like it because it was portrayed as a comedy. And I'm watching this like, what the fuck is this? I'm not laughing. And then you have to rewatch it a couple of times, for me anyway, to realize all the jokes are subtle and they're very <laughs> dry. And then once I understood the humor, I kind of got behind it. I'm like, all right, I can I can do this. And I, now that I'm fully understanding it, I appreciate it a lot more now than when I was doing it way back then. The biggest, without going back and looking at anything, just a side note, the biggest thing that sticks out from that movie in my mind is, I think they're on a, I think they're on a boat. 
Jeff Goblin. <laughs> Jeff Goblin just gets up with a roll of paper and just like smacks the dog and he's like, "Be quiet." <laughs> but is that is this your dog? I actually thought coming. that's where Dean was going to stop when he's like, the thing that I always remember is they were on a boat. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where the aquatic part comes in, Dean. <laughs> I would like to rewatch that movie. Um, it oh. is much more melancholy. Like, it's it's funny, but I, watching it, I forget how melancholy the back half of it is. That it's it's a very bittersweet movie. Yeah. I always love the line. It's like, you know, hey, Jan, do the interns get Glocks? And the girl's just like, no, they all share one. And it's like, oh, okay. And just the way that it's like it has those comedic moments in the beginning. And then, like, in the middle, you got, like, that action segment, which is kind of a – I don't think there's really a lot of action in any of his movies. No, not really. Yeah, because when they get – um held up by the pirates and then they try to rescue the bond company stooge swamp leeches everybody check for swamp leeches yeah the, i'm the only one <laughs> am i the only one that got hit <laughs> yeah and then that ending really is like it takes a turn it's like you know, it's yeah a little sad with everything like i almost wish the ending was a little bit different just because that's not how i want to remember like the end it's <laughs> i mean really it's a case of you grow to really enjoy characters i mean it's a great cast you grow to enjoy all the people and the adventures and you want it to keep going on that it's like well that's rough and for anybody who hasn't seen it they're probably confused go watch the movie it's absolutely worth seeing it has it has one of the best smash cut yeah. jokes i think that i've seen which is um Owen Wilson, I think he's like doing his first dive or something. And he's like on the side of the either the pool. I think yeah, he's like in a gonna dive into a pool. And he's like counting. He's like, here we go. I was like, one, two. And then he like he goes to fall over into the water and then just smash cuts and he's like being doing CPR on him. <laughs> like he's <laughs> so something like that where he's like just immediately cuts to the bad consequences of him trying to dive <laughs> it's pretty good yeah i mean it's i know wes anderson and bill bill <laughs> yeah and, and bill go go together they're in lots of movies together and royal tenenbaums would have been i almost said that but i don't I was like i don't know if he yeah he doesn't have a huge role in that one but rushmore yeah. was the one that i was gonna say like Fuck, I know he's good in that, but I can't like remember any of it. Yeah, I think the last time I watched Rushmore was uh, I had just gotten my iPod video, and it was one of the things that I was able to get on it. So I like sat in bed, huddled around a little inch and a half iPod video screen watching Rushmore, and I've never watched it again, even though I enjoyed it. It's more so it's a time thing. Like There's movies I enjoy that I just don't necessarily have the time to decide... Well, there's so much new stuff out. Let yeah. me take time and go back and rewatch. Unless it's something that's just like, ah, oh, man, I love this movie. I don't want to go back and be like, well, does it hold up? Because if it doesn't, I've ruined part of my nostalgia and I've wasted 90 minutes. <laughs> that's just part of it. And that's part of the problem I always wonder about with each passing year, the thousands of things that are made. It's like things are just going to get lost to the years you know eventually there's well, be so many things some things yeah I, that's why i don't watch nearly as much stuff as i used to because it's just it's overabundance of choice and the pressure of like this is really good you need to watch it this is really good you need to watch it it's it's too much and i feel like if i'm not watching everything and keeping up it's it, it's like a vicious circle of just too many new things. And yes, I could be enjoying it, but it's just I want to pick things at my own leisure and I'm not going to pick things that many yeah. people may be even currently watching. And it's just a lot tougher to keep up with how much is pumped out on a daily basis compared to what it was like, you know. I keep saying they need the to make it 90s. harder for people to make movies. <laughs> they need to it's make only it getting so, way easier. Yeah. 
this way it's it's the only way you can actually get a movie out is if you're backed by a major studio and only allow studios five movies a year so this one when they release them they have to go with whatever the big blockbuster budget one is going to be then i don't have as much to watch <laughs> i only got time for like one movie a month if that like come on you got i need some quality here that wraps up our favorite Bill Murray movies on this month's Rule of Thirds. As always, you can reach us at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email at screenrefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three would be or any topics you'd like to hear us discuss. Also, we have a Discord. Come on over and chat with us and get behind-the-scenes tidbits on your favorite episodes. That's it for us. So for Tim and Dean, this is Nick. You have a great week now, and you can catch us next on Screen Refresh, the first Monday of the month. You can also listen to our sister podcast, Don't Open This Podcast, hosted by our own resident Tim and Mike Valsigno, every second and fourth Monday of the month. <laughs>